What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're gonna talk about using LinkedIn automation tools and not getting banned. What's up guys? So everyone pretty much knows that LinkedIn is the holy grail of recruiting platforms out there. I mean, we pretty much use LinkedIn for just about everything, including just to be there, to have a very presence there. We use it to find clients. We use it to find decision makers. We use it to headhunt and find candidates. However, we're also super, super lazy people. So we like tools that do all of that stuff for us. So when it comes to LinkedIn and automation tools, things get a little bit hairy. So without going into super, super detail, LinkedIn's terms of service don't exactly align perfectly with all of the tools that we regularly use all the time, like every single day. And that creates what I consider to be a very, very gray area. So I figured I would make a video to talk about most of the tools that are popular that we all use and how to use them in a fashion that will not get you banned. So first off, just getting banned from LinkedIn could really, really suck. So people need to understand the ramifications of this. When you get banned from LinkedIn, I'm quite certain that they make it really difficult for you to ever get back on or stay on if you do get back on. I don't know the exact things that they utilize, but I do believe that I've heard they use IP tracking, which basically means that I can't take this device and get banned and then start using another random device just because it will know where I'm coming from and basically who I am and I'll be screwed forever and I'll have to run around to libraries and do weird stuff like that and possibly use fake pictures and yeah, that's just not gonna happen. Every single tool that we regularly use that is popular for LinkedIn automation does have inherent risk for you to be banned from LinkedIn. If someone tries to tell you that a certain tool is 100% safe and you have absolutely no risk of getting banned, they are 100% lying because that is not true whatsoever. If a tool is not created by LinkedIn itself or one of its third parties or sanctioned by LinkedIn in some way, it's 100% not safe to use. It will not align with their terms of service. Any third party service that doesn't immediately have some sort of agreement with LinkedIn that is known about, it's not safe to use. Just take my word on that. Also keep in mind that LinkedIn has 100% of the right to ban you for any reason whatsoever. They are a private platform. They can do whatever they want. It's just like Facebook. Facebook could determine your profile picture to be somehow obscene and randomly ban you and you would have absolutely no recourse. So what I'm gonna do is go over some of the tools that we regularly use right now, but I'm gonna tell you all of the precautions that you should be taking when you're using these tools. First up on my list is Duck Soup, an awesome tool but also a walk on the wild side. If you haven't experienced using Duck Soup before, Duck Soup pretty much lets you do anything a recruiter would ever need to do, ever. That would mean doing things like connections with sending requests, connecting just to connect, sending over messages with campaigns, endorsing people, scanning and visiting profiles for absolutely no reason other than to show up as viewed as, also collecting emails from profiles that have public emails on them. So here's the deal with Duck Soup. It pretty much lets you go crazy. So if you wanted to go and hit a thousand profiles every single day and connect and send a note to every single one of those profiles, Duck Soup would pretty much let you start doing that. Um, Obvious problem with that, LinkedIn would shut that down pretty much instantaneously once you hit about 500 or so on the first day. Duck Soup is super awesome for all that it allows you to do. You just need to be in total control when you're using it. You have to have your hand on the throttle 
and know exactly where to stop when you're doing things. Of the things that I mentioned that DuckSoup allows you to do, like grab emails or send connection requests, you wanna pick one of those items per day. You don't wanna do multiples of those per day because it's gonna be seen as pretty much in one bucket. So if you send 100 connection requests and then you do 100 email grabs, that's gonna look like 200 activities and anything that's seen as unhuman or unhuman-like behavior by LinkedIn is definitely what shuts you off. If you play it safe with duck soup, you'll do just fine. You'll collect a bunch of data. Just don't let that robot eat your LinkedIn profile alive. The next tool I want to talk about is Lead Leaper, which generates emails. Now, Lead Leaper is actually something relatively new to me personally. I've only been using it for about a month, but it's a steal of a deal. It's actually $30 per month and allows you to grab 3,000 emails off of LinkedIn profiles per month. With that all being said, I actually have zero data as to how dangerous, per se, Lead Leaper actually is. I've used it myself to grab about probably a 1,000 emails over a period of about a month, but I haven't heard of any issues. I haven't had any issues myself. So I'm pretty much believing that it's gonna be a relatively safe tool from what I understand overall, but all bets are off with automation. So you have to keep your eye on the ball and just make sure that nothing goes haywire. Specifically how Lead Leaper works is basically you dial up a search of let's say, regional managers in construction. And there'll be about, you know, let's say 10,000 results or something. And Lead Leaper will open up and give you the option to grab the first page of emails or the first five pages of emails or the first 10 pages of emails. I've usually stuck with just grabbing the first page. I actually grabbed five pages only one time and that seemed to be totally fine. It grabbed all that data and everything was cool but I don't think I'd push the limit beyond that because I just don't know what's gonna happen at that point and it's just not worth the risk. Other than that, I can't say pretty much anything else about Lead Leaper other than it's a really good deal, it brings back valid emails, which is pretty awesome, and it's definitely a good tool, so it's proven so far. I would definitely keep my eye on it, I would obviously be a user continuously of it, but just make sure you don't go crazy and you'll be safe. Another tool that's really, really awesome that I am a user of and a super fanboy of is Octopus. All right, so what Octopus does is actually sends connection requests with custom notes for you automatically. So Octopus is actually very much different than all of the other tools because it has its own safety mechanisms built into it. What I mean by that is that Octopus won't even let you go above 100 connections per day. I have to say I find that quite respectable and I'm totally fine with it considering if I use Octopus every single day, I'm gonna end the week with 700 connection requests sent with custom notes. I really just like the fact that Octopus is ahead of the game on safety and it already has it built in so it really is just not gonna let you screw yourself, right? So it's gonna get way ahead of LinkedIn on any type of banning or blocking and that's really cool. Now the last one I wanna mention is Linked Helper, otherwise known as LinkedIn Helper and this is a very similar story to Duck Soup. I say that because like Duck Soup, Linked Helper also has very little throttle control, which is actually the main thing that you need when you're practicing safe automation on LinkedIn. Obviously, this can become dangerous very quickly, and you definitely need to be aware of it for the reasons that I spoke about before. So just make sure your hand is on that throttle and you're not going crazy. The reason I keep mentioning that is because at a certain point, it becomes very tempting to see how many people you can actually reach per day or per week, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe I can scheme the algorithm or get around it if I do it this way or that way. And it's usually just not best practice to even try that whatsoever. Just go ahead and play by the rules, connect with about 100 people per day, and you'll be just fine. It's also worth mentioning that you should not double dip or triple dip on your automation tools per day. 
Now, what I mean by that is not using multiple tools to do different things or even the same things in one day, such as grabbing emails with Duck Soup and then grabbing emails with Lead Leaper or connecting to 100 people with Duck Soup and then connecting to 100 people with Octopus. That is all seen as unhuman-like behavior. It'll definitely trip some serious wires with LinkedIn's algorithm and it'll most likely lead you to a serious warning, if not an instant ban. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, LinkedIn automation is awesome. It's actually super, super helpful. And a lot of people get so much benefit out of LinkedIn automation. Just continue to use it safely and wisely and we'll have it here for a long time and you will not ruin your LinkedIn account and you'll be doing fine. I hope that this video provided some value to you and if it did, please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well as the alert button so that you can know every single time I come out with a new video video. Until then.